where half of their buildings have like a one skin and then the other half have a different skin, like building skin. Am I seeing am I the only one seeing that? That's weird. Anyways. The drop does go in. A good blink on top, but that's not enough units to take down this many marines, so several stalkers will die. A lot of probes going down for Dark Menace as well. Um, so this drop has actually gone pretty decently, I want to say, for Ghost Chant, considering there were this many Phoenix out on the map. Uh, and now a lot of the army was forced back there. Ghost Chant needs to burrow these mines in the near future. That is a lot of splash damage, though. Well, with that amount of Void Race, could maybe burn down the, uh, the Colossi if he so desires. Big Widowmine shots, I think actually partially hitting the, um, the Void Rays there. The Void Rays target fire was not good at all. They were shooting sentries for a good amount of that fight, which is about the least effective unit they could have been shooting. Sentry's not an armored unit, so the Void Rays doing very little damage. And, uh, looks like Neutrophil and Dark Menace will be able to just kind of roll through the purifiers here. Uh, a little unfortunate there. I think the target fire, yeah, on the Void Rays just not quite good enough. And I think maybe pulling the trigger a little bit too early there. Uh, not enough Void Race to really overwhelm, and the Mines was a decent choice early on into the game, but they really didn't have a continuation to be able to deal with the Colossi later on. Uh, and now we're seeing GG Izzy pushing through the bases of the Purifiers, and there's just not a big enough army to withstand as Neutrophil now maxed out on Carrier, Blink Stalker, Sentry, Phoenix. Say that three times fast, I dare you. Is, uh, yeah, I think they'll be able to push up here. No storm, but no storm needed, it looks like. As we see, the Void Rays do get targeted a little bit there, but uh, just not enough at this point. Not enough units. And they push up into the natural base of the Purifiers. GG is called. And we're looking to get game number two. GG. <laughs> All right, what's up, guys? We're live. This is FSL Playoffs. I'm here with ET. How you doing, ET? Good. How are you? Great. So let's look at what we got here for our first uh, game. Well, we have two matches tonight, right? So let's show that on screen. Uh, Criminal Cyan. That'll go on later. That's Terran versus Protoss. We'll start off with these young guns. What do you think about these young guns? Yeah, I mean, both pretty aggressive players, I'd say. So we're going to see, I'd imagine, a pretty aggressive series overall. Um, I think relatively evenly matched in their match during the group stages. So it could go either way for sure. Yeah, and, and these are, uh, you know, there's, what, three or four that are super young in FSL. These are two in that group, and they're both Protosses. So what do you expect from them, E.T.? 
Um, I'm expecting a lot of one base play. Um, <laughs> I don't expect too many expansions for sure, but we'll see yeah. exactly what they go for. Obviously, Little Reaper we saw against Cyan. He was pulling uh -huh. out proxy robos and things like that. And yeah. so we'll definitely see a lot of aggression, I think. Yeah. And uh, the Archaic is very good, and he sometimes plays Terror and two to throw things off, right? So just especially yeah, like sure. the beginning to try to take a lead and then he'll do he'll do his normal thing so why don't we bring him in let's start interviewing these players um looks like the archaic's camera went out but we do have little reaper we have him here let's we could probably start asking him questions there you go so little reaper's there the archaic's camera is is not working so he needs to redo that but but while we have Little Reaper here, we could start with him. Go ahead, E.T. Yeah, Little Reaper, you've made it here to the playoffs of the Code A. How are you feeling um, making it this far? Uh, happy. That's great. Good to hear. Now, obviously, there's uh, there's four of y'all that made it here into the, uh, the playoffs. Are you happy that you got against the Archaic out of the opponents you could have played? Or is there someone in the playoffs you would have rather been put up against first? Uh, actually, like, having Jacob... Uh, the first. Okay, all right. KJ, did you have any questions? Yeah, so, okay, actually, let's make sure the archaic is here now. All right, questions for you, Little Reaper. Uh, are you sticking with Protoss tonight, or are you going to do the other races? Um, sticking with Protoss. Got it. And you said you're pretty happy. Any other feelings about tonight's matchups versus uh, the Archaic? Uh, scared. All right, scared. And uh, the Archaic is here now. We can go chat with him. Hello. Uh, How you doing, the Archaic? How you feeling tonight? Uh, I've been. I'm doing okay. Uh, this is like <laughs> an exaggeration of like maybe the fifth time I've played like Alex and the Papoya out in the rebranded playoffs. Yeah, you guys keep matching up with each other. Uh, the winner will face Criminal versus Cyan's winner. Um, but tonight it's PvP, but I know you've been known to pull off some Terran builds too. So uh, that's, all, all, of course, allowed in this league. Uh, any questions for BET? Uh, let's see. So yeah, um, I guess PvP, you know, pretty crazy matchup. Do you feel like you're going to be able to navigate through that in a best of five as well as you have in the uh, the best of threes previously? How do you feel about a best of five versus a best of three? Uh, best of fives are definitely a lot more stressful. And uh, I think I think I'll, I'll probably get like, maybe flustered in the last few games. But I, I can probably pull it. I, can, I think I can pull it off. Yeah. Best okay. of five Perfect. sounds sounds fun. It's a little bit longer than the best of three, but sometimes, you know, with these games, <laughs> you want more games, right, E.T.? Um, Absolutely. Any final words to each, to your opponent, uh, the Archaic? Uh, let's just uh, have a good game again. And, All right. Uh, yeah. And uh, Little Reaper? Good luck. All right. Well, we'll server Defend and mute you now, and we'll bring you in the game. Hang tight, guys. All right, we got DLS Mizell helping us admin. So, ET, now that they're not listening, what do you really think? Um, I do think it's going to be a pretty even match. Um, I mean, obviously, in the uh, group stages, the Archaic did pull it out there. But uh, Little Reaper, a very strong player as well. And there's been a good amount of time, I think, since they played for both of them to improve. Um, That's true. And let's take a look at our maps here. There's, they vetoed and they selected these maps shown here. Yeah, so we can take a look at this. Obviously, they only get one veto each. So Blackburn and Curious Minds, um, obviously a little bit of a weird map and then the really short map being uh, vetoed by each of them. So we're actually gonna have a pretty large map pool here um, in terms of actually the size of the maps themselves. So should be interesting to see what they pull out there. A little surprised, honestly, uh, with how aggressive these two players get that we see um, probably the two best maps for aggression getting vetoed, though. Yeah. All right. Well, 2000 Atmosphere is a super standard map, so we're ready to get into the game. Let's load on in. 
Alrighty, here we go. Loaded in to the bottom left hand side of 2000 atmospheres. Oh, and we need a quick pause out of one of our players. Just ironing out some issues, I'd imagine, maybe with a mouse or something like that. So we'll give him a moment to fix that. Um, but yeah, obviously, these players are two of our playoffs players. Show them the code A that you're watching here, guys the, uh, the mid tier gold and platinum leagues. Um, so starting to get their build shaped up pretty well getting up towards those uh, high ranks as uh yeah 2000 atmospheres pvp go a lot of ways i think this is a map you see one gate expands on a decent amount in pvp but you can also see a lot of aggression little reaper against cyan as i keep mentioning i think did a proxy robo um, on this map hit it over by cyan's third base and uh, went unscouted managed to clean up that game pretty easily here um, and I do wonder if the arcade playing his best race will help him here or actually hurt him a little bit just because Little Reaper will know what the, what he's going up against a little bit more. But we'll see. As it uh, looks like our players are indeed ready to go. So we're just counting back in. And game the game easy. is going. So in the bottom left-hand side here, we have the blue Protoss player. He is... Little Reaper. And his opponent in the top right. Oh, and I misspoke. He's actually Terran. Purple Terran player. He is. The Archaic. Uh, which I believe he did go Terran on this map against Little Reaper in their last series as well. Uh, did like a proxy Cyclone build, I think. So we'll see what he opts for in this game. This Little Reaper drops his pylon right next to his Nexus and the Archaic. Going out for a pretty early SCV scout as the gateway does drop. I think, yeah, looking for proxies maybe a little bit. Proxy 4-gate or something like that. Or could be proxying a building of his own. Yeah, it looks like that may be the case there. Or he might be hiding a base. I'm not really sure. As he's gone double depot, but he hasn't taken a gas yet. That's a very late gas, so this can't really be a proxy factory or anything like that. Maybe just hiding it there so it doesn't get scouted so he can proxy something a lot later on into the game. <laughs> Like a uh, proxy starport or something like that. We will see. <clears throat> Little Reaper's coming across the map, though, with his probe scout. Will be denied by that supply depot. As his cyber core does drop, <clears throat> looks like he's moving down to take an expansion off of just one gas. So, fairly macro focused opening out of him here. Looks like it may be the same for the archaic, though. So we'll see exactly uh, what he opts for here. Just hiding behind the natural base right now is Little Reaper's Probe as he takes his second gas. Um, and actually, I think he completely blocked his gas from mining um, in his main base. So that's actually very unfortunate. Yeah, if you watch that probe, they're having to go all the way around here. So a very unfortunate start for Little Reaper here as uh, unfortunately did wall with his gateway and his pylon. We do have a proxy base going the way of Neutrophil a little bit in this game number one. As uh, Nexus is down, <clears throat> and Little Reaper, he's just patrolling with that probe outside of the natural base of the Archaic, so no sign of what's going on yet for him. As, uh, yeah, just not able to utilize that gas is very unfortunate for him there. Dropped it, I think, just maybe one pixel too low, or one placement slot too low rather than uh, where he wanted it to go, I'd imagine. Now, uh, the proxy base... <clears throat> is good if it doesn't get scouted, but if Little Reaper can't figure out what's going on, it's very hard to defend that, especially as a Terran player. We really, really have to rely on those siege tanks and those bunkers in the early game. But going into a really quick third that just looks like a fairly slow second base to Little Reaper is the Archaic. Little Reaper is still just pumping out probes. He's going to go for a robotics facility now. 
floating a good bit of money though. I think his build's really been thrown off both by the mind game his opponent's gone for and him accidentally blocking his own gas. I think has definitely thrown off his build quite a bit here. Continue to make probes though. As that second orbital will finish up for the archaic here soon. And every time I think that probe's going to go over to the left there, it turns back around and comes back to the natural, unfortunately. I don't know if Little Reaper... He did see the natural base that's actually the third base for the Archaic, so does at least know about that. And uh, honestly, reacted pretty uh, a pretty small amount to the lack of a natural base. Wasn't able to get into scout. Maybe it was on the high ground kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and so... With that, he's not actually very far down in the economy at this point. He's actually up eight workers. Uh, with mules, that's about even income, I believe. And yeah, checking the income tab. It is pretty even right now. Um, the only real disparity there is the fact that Little Reaper's gas mining is a little low because of that misplaced pylon. Um, a charge now on the way as well. Stim and combat shields come out very quick. Uh, it... We're actually going up to a lot of barracks here for the Archaic. He's going up to six racks, as well as his factory just now finishing. So he's going to have a big Bioforce here in the near future. Um, if Little Reaper hits before that Bioforce really gets out, though, that could be good for him as he's going up to five gateways, maybe a sixth here soon. I'd really like to see that, maybe. Uh, or maybe even just a quick Templar Archives behind this, just pressure off of four or five gateways and then go into Storm. Uh, but we'll see exactly what he opts for here. He's sending out another probe to scout, just warping in some zealots. One at a time, as his gateways are only just now getting close to finishing up. And uh, does have plenty of supply available, but definitely floating a lot of money here is Little Reaper. Um, as I think this was the plan all along, it's just been heavily slowed by the lack of uh, gas from that main base. And so he's wound up, you know, at this point, he probably should have had a warp-in round or two already done. Uh, but instead, he's just now starting to warp in. <laughs> He is bringing in four Zealots to the main base. There's only 11 Marines and a Marauder. And he'll be able to warp in five additional Zealots. That'll be, a, you know, nine charge lots against only a dozen Marines and a couple Marauders, really. Looks like he won't opt to go for the warp in, though. Just picks up and flies out of there instead to the safety of that back airspace. Double medevac now on the way out, though. And I think if he'd gone for a warp in, four of Archaic's units were in a bunker and he probably would not have thought to remove them from there so he could have actually been in a pretty good spot still though is redropping has killed quite a few scvs thus far but now zealots do get aggroed onto the marines do only kill a single marine but it is four five scvs and a marine or two for four zealots it's not the end of the world by any means and may actually wind up scouting this other base i don't think so though but now I think the Archaic might be able to just push across the map and kill him, honestly. this The macro has slipped quite a bit for Little Reaper in the last minute or two. Um, it's now floating quite a lot of resources. Could have gone up to eight gateways or a third base, maybe a robotics facility to get out Colossi. Um, there's a lot of ways he could have spent his money, but unfortunately has not done that. And so now it's going to be 10 Zealots against like 20 Marines and a couple Marauders with stem, with combat shields. Um, there is a shield battery, so as long as he fights within that shield battery, he may be okay. But he's got to make sure to fight there. Well, we see an overcharge as the pylon starts to get targeted down a little bit here. Yeah, we'll be able to target down the pylon, and Little Reaper, unfortunately, not clicking on it with his shield battery. The Marines not trading the greatest against the charge zealots, but it's definitely good enough. As, uh, yeah, I think Little Reaper just not quite macroing as cleanly as he needed to. Once he went out with that uh, Warp Prism, he really mac microed it pretty heavily. I think he had an opportunity with it even, but unfortunately did not capitalize. And so the Archaic is going to be able to take a pretty dominating position here in game number one. Should be able to close it out potentially even as well as it's just a, a little bit of Zealots warping in here and there. But against a lot of Bio, that's going to be real hard. The Bio is very heavily stemmed at the moment, but good kiting around by the Archaic. Down goes that warp in of Zealots. There's a lot of money still available to continue those warp ins. So the Reaper's actually targeting, but now a bunch more Marines and Marauders come in, and even with target fire on the weakened units, I just don't think it's going to be enough here for Little Reaper. The Archaic's units are pushing through, killing so many probes now as well, and can even load up into the medevac as soon as things get dicey. He's up 68 supply to only 23. 
And unfortunately, yeah, had really good macro in the early game, but didn't add on quite enough gateways. He's still only on five gateways. Could have easily been on eight at this point, but or in some higher tech would have been very nice as well. Archons would have been huge in that initial fight and definitely had the gas for it, but just getting a little bit thrown off, I think, by his opponent's build. And uh, the Archaic obviously has a very nice economy with three orbitals at this point. So, as a, uh, we even see a Viking getting picked up into a medevac here. And, uh, yeah, just redropping down on the low ground. We'll be able to kill that natural base soon. So the unit's trickling down the ramp here. And uh, the Archaic just in a fantastic position at this point. Little Reaper is giving a valiant effort, but... I think with just the pouring of Marines across the map, the Archaic is going to be able to do it anyways. Does lose his medevac, which is nice, but now there's no units left to defend the warp ends, and obviously, warping in units take extra damage until they are fully warped in. The GG is called. Alright, so very nice play out of the Archaic there. A cheeky little hidden base, and uh, unfortunately, I think a big part of that was that uh, that pylon blocking the gas, unfortunately. But uh, sometimes it's hard to judge whether you're in a good spot or not with where you place that. All right, well, we're going to head into our map number two, which is Pride of Altaris. Obviously, the main feature of this uh, this map is the full-sized gold base you get. Uh, but it is a little exposed, so it can be hard to take. However, players sometimes do still opt to try and get it very early on and defend it. Um, we saw, I think it was Astraea against Special or something like that. He went for the gold base Nexus first, which was... A very bold play. I'm not sure if he actually wound up winning the game from that or not. I don't remember. But we are heading into game here now. We'll see if that gold base comes into play at all, but we are loading in. In the bottom right hand side, we have our blue pro toss player. He is. His opponent in the upper left, the purple pro toss this time, it is. All right, so we have a high ground pylon out of the archaic, low ground out of Little Reaper. And we'll see exactly what these players have planned in store for us here. Gateway does drop for the Archaic. Same for Little Reaper, of course. Not likely to see a cannon rush on this map. Uh, really, throughout the series, I doubt we'll see any cannon rushes. Gas is now being taken, and Little Reaper not wanting to risk... His pylon blocking his gas again puts it in an entirely different base. So, I like that choice there. A good adjustment from the first game. As uh, we do see a second gateway coming down pretty quick for Little Reaper. The Archaic looks like he's going to try and go for a one-gate expand build, potentially. Little Reaper playing it a little bit more safe and with a little bit more opportunity for aggression. So the Archaic's probe is pathing a little weirdly, but... No harm, no foul just yet. Oh, but now it's proxy to pylon, I believe. Um, yep, there we go. Proxy pylon out of the Archaic against this two gate from Little Reaper, so most likely a proxy Stargate. As, uh... We do have the two gateways finishing up. Second pylon on the way to pretty good timing for it. Little Reaper has gone double gas. I don't think we've seen a scout out of him yet. I believe this is his first probe moving out. Indeed it is. So 
little unfortunate there. There is a Nexus coming down out of the Archaic. And there is that Proxy Stargate. So we're going to have Void Rays, as they call them, I believe. Uh, but Double Stalker being chronoed right away by Little Reaper. If he sniffs this out, he'll be able to shut this down very hard, as it is very close and exposed. But, never mind, he's going for a Proxy Pylon of his own. Interesting. Only two Stalkers thus far. He is firing up a third one now. No tech on the way. I think he's going for his Proxy Robo build. Um, so we'll see. That may wind up working out pretty well for him here. Yeah, it's going to be... Oh, I'm sorry. Three Gate Twilight. Twilight Council actually could be nice as well. Blink, obviously, very useful against Void Rage. And this Void Rage, he's got heavily nerfed since the last time I can remember seeing it in the FSL. Uh, with that battery nerf, they only start with half energy, uh, which is not a lot for those of you that uh, weren't aware. Now, no scout out of a Little Reaper is a little unfortunate, and his Twilight tech is quite late here. Um, but he does have Warp Gate at a pretty good timing. We'll have four Stalkers out around the time that the Void Ray is out, but only one is going to be in a position, which really means just means it's going to be in position to die. Uh, <laughs> it will have a short life. We are chronoing Blink, however. I'm getting a Forge. And this Pylon may actually scout this. Oh, the Void Ray is actually going into the natural where there's going to be three Stalkers, and three Stalkers do beat a Void Ray, so it needs to be careful here. We'll be able to overcharge, though. Oh, Little Reaper, you do not want to go in there. Ah, should have just run up and away. We'll make it out with the one Stalker. He needs to micro that Stalker and keep it back until that battery's finished up. Does get found, though. Warp Gate is done now, and we can see already one shield battery already fully drained. Void Ray Overcharge is gone, and a shield battery is on the way for Little Reaper as well, who's able to warp in two more Stalkers. So There's going to be five Stalkers to two Void Rays battery on the way soon but those gateways are very exposed on the low ground at the same time though he could easily just drop two more gateways right now as a quick snap call he'll have blink out shortly does have one gateway protection oh and he actually goes for the pylon will drain a lot of battery energy here potentially as well oh and barely keeps his own stalker alive but now his two gateways are depowered he'll only have one gateway worth of production at the moment he'll be able to warp in some stalkers though so it's not the end of the world is adding on more gateways more pylons definitely wants to add a more shield battery he's floating 600 minerals definitely needs a lot more buildings coming down here in the near future he can afford to lose those gateways i think although at the same time the archaic he's got a uh, a natural base he's got void ray production he'll be able to just fly these home whenever things get dicey and uh, little reaper does not have a lot of production at the moment we'll have blink soon and if he can take out this position and a good amount of Void Rays. Then he may be in an okay spot, but the Archaic is committing to this. He's only at 27 workers here, and Little Reaper is at 29 if he could ever expand. Oh, will he be able to take down that? I think if he blinked forward, he could have gotten it, but may have then died in return. Not adding on more batteries is really, really unfortunate here for Little Reaper. He needed more of those, and he could have literally 12 batteries right now with how much money he's floating. Um, needs more shield batteries, needs that energy. That's one of your big advantages as well on the defenses. If you get full shield battery energy on your shield batteries whenever they're made, rather than just half. Saw a fleet beacon start to get built out of the Archaic there, so maybe going to try and go into Tempest now, which would be interesting. It's four gates, but only two of them are powered. Ah, man, Little Reaper, I think, just not fully practiced in this style needs to just get like two or three more stargates really um even an immortal to be able to chunk down those shield batteries would be helpful but not doing so does kill a void ray so good blink on top here but his production is just going to get outpaced by that of the archaic here soon who's taking his additional two gases on his natural base going to be able to produce out of three full stargates worth of void rays with that i believe if he so desires another great blink on top though He's going to go for it. Oh, bad targeting, though. Could have gotten that other Void Ray down a little bit quicker. Does still get a second Void Ray, too. So now it's down to only two Void Rays. Two more on the way. And if he had four or five powered gateways here, he's in a really good spot. But as it is, he just doesn't have the production to capitalize on this. If he warps in another four Stalkers right here, suddenly he can just blink down on top of those batteries. There's no overcharge. It would be 12 Stalkers to three Void Rays. Um, you can just absolutely out DPS the shield batteries at that point with no overcharge. And... Uh, He'd be able to uh, be able to take it down pretty easily, but instead he's only able to warp in two stalkers at a time. 
Uh, but it looks like the Archaic is giving up on the idea of killing Little Reaper here. As he sees four additional shield batteries coming down. Uh, a little bit late there out of Little Reaper, but not the end of the world. Could definitely go ahead and take an expansion and really needs to do so. And he does have a much better tech here. Um, with the Stalkers here, he's in a much better technological position. Really warped down, I think... He will blink down shortly. Uh, if he could deny that last Void Ray getting out, that would be nice. But he's worried about the Void Rays waiting, lying in wait for him. So he doesn't want to risk it. So that Void Ray will make it out, which means it will be... Oh, and he's even going for Flux Veins back at home. It'll be five Void Rays with Flux Veins. Uh, but both Stargates are here, so I think maybe he even canceled that. Nope, he did get Flux Veins out, so he has that upgrade now. Little Reaper's just playing a little bit too slow here, I think. Needs to expand... Really should just double expand um, natural base and third base. As he's got a great position here technologically. Blink stalkers scale so much better than void rays, especially whenever all the void ray production is now gone for the archaic. And we'll have out five, no, four gateways, sorry. Four gateways now. Oh, sorry, he did that on two more. So it'll be six gateways now. He's starting to get the steps together. And you can see that. Little Reaper knows what he's supposed to do, but he's not trained on this response as much, so it takes him a little bit longer to get there. Um, once he's got time to breathe and think, he's able to do it pretty quickly. And it looks like he's going to try and get aggressive on the other side of the map, and honestly, I like it. It's going to be five Void Rays and a Stalker and some Shield Batteries against currently 20 Stalkers and a Sentry, which will be able to provide a Guardian Shield, which is a great move out of uh, Little Reaper, by the way. Very nice there. Uh, but in addition to that, he'll be able to add on five more Stalkers with the final warp in once his units get across the map. Won't have enough money, actually. But still, should be able to get up to like 23, 24 Stalkers whenever he goes in here. And uh, he can just blink on top of those two shield batteries on the third base, kill those, maybe kill a Void Ray or two. Actually, with this number of Stalkers, you can just blink on top of the Void Rays, completely ignore Battery Overcharge, and uh, one-shot the Voids. So I think we may actually see Little Reaper be able to take it down here. Oh, but he's so worried. You gotta know you outnumber him here, though, right? Surely. And yeah, I mean, you look at that. Oh, he needs to stutter step in, though. Little Reaper not as versed in the micro of this, I think, maybe. Still, though, does pull back until the overcharge runs out. And once that battery overcharge is gone and the Void Rays all use their overcharge, well, the Stalkers should really be able to take this down pretty hard. Does blink on top, but he accidentally target fires the Nexus with his first shot. That's an extra Void Ray not going down immediately, which is painful, but all the Void Rays will fall here. Shield batteries can't out-heal this DPS. Little Reaper able to warp in another five Stalkers. His natural base is finishing up. He'll be able to start mining off of it shortly if he hasn't already. Uh, there is four Stargates of production of Void Rays, but that's just not going to be enough here against Little Reaper's comp as his tech is just far superior. He's even going to warp past up into the main base. So there's no shield batteries here, boy. And uh, shield battery overcharge, I think, still a ways away here for our player in the top left. And indeed it is. Still on cooldown. However, Little Reaper is only here with about half his Stalkers. Does manage to depower three of the Stargates, which is nice. But he fights into overcharged Void Rays. And that third base stays alive. So if he doesn't kill him here, the Archaic still on three base. Granted, one of them mostly mined out. But I think a mistake to uh, go in and fight before all your Stalkers are on the high ground. And to fight into Battery Overcharge is just not going to work out for you. A good hallucination, but... Uh think should have just killed that third base you have way better tech than your opponent stargates just aren't very good um in pvp once you get up to a lot of stalkers and we saw that i mean just able to absolutely out dps the void rays and out maneuver them really As, uh, does manage to depower another stargate we'll have to run away now as the void rays are chasing with their overcharge on little reaper though another thing he's mining with four out of six on his natural base, 21 out of 8 on his main. So if he'd resaturate that base, he'd still be in a pretty good spot here as he's not that far down in workers. But uh, he's trying to go for the kill and instead will end up dying for it. I think if he just macroed a little bit stronger here, focused a little bit more on it, and just taking that third base and left, he would have been in a great spot. But as it is now, only just now saturating that natural base and he's down half in supply when he could have easily been up in supply after taking out so many Void Rays at that third base. So a little unfortunate there. Still has a chance here, but now there's a lot of Void Rays out. Six Void Rays to two Stalkers. There's no Shield Battery in the natural base, and I think it's just too little, too late for Little Reaper here. It was a good try in game number two to come back, but the Archaic is able to defend the counterattack, has a better economy behind it, and GG will be called.
All right, well, that's game number two in the books. It is 2-0 for the Archaic at this point. Still, though, it looked close for Little Reaper, especially if you look at that army value graph. But unfortunately, what you also see there is just a plummet in his army value. Whenever he went into that main base, he was doubling the army supply before that. So if he just played it a little bit slower, I think he would have been okay. Still, does look like he has a decent chance at making it into a game four or even a game five. Games haven't looked too dominant yet for him, uh, for the Archaic, I should say. So we'll see what they manage to do here. As we are going to head into Berlin Grad LE here for our game number three, potentially our last game of this series, before we toss it over to Cyan and Criminal. I'm just getting our players into the game at the moment. And then we'll be able to load in. So Berlingrad, a little bit smaller of a map, has some intricacies that are different. A lot of those mineral mine outs, a lot of destructible debris. So a lot of cool things you can do there with that. Some interesting proxy locations available. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. We are counting into game now. We'll see if the Archaic is able to close it out with a clean 3-0, or if Little Reaper will fight back. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. In the upper left-hand side of the map, we have our purple Pro Toss player. He is... His opponent in the bottom right, the blue Protoss player. He is Little Reaper. So the Archaic looking pretty strong with a lot of aggression in the previous games, some hidden bases as well. And going out with a very quick probe. Pylon scouting here. Little Reaper not opting for a pylon scout. And no forge out of the Archaic, so that is indeed just a scout at the moment may end up becoming a proxy a little bit later on as well. So we'll see if there is another proxy that happens in this game. Or not. Scout a little reapers coming across the map. Double gas on the way for him. Still only single gas for the archaic. Little Reaper really could just uh, pile on block the Archaic's natural if he so desired. Oh, and he looks like he may want to, but he's not moving his probe to the right spot. Oh, definitely could have been a block there, and that would have thrown off the Archaic's build so much there. So a little bit unfortunate there for Little Reaper. I mean, there's really no reason to not, if you're going to rally your probe over to the opponent's natural, just put it where their base should be. And then worst case scenario, you're still blocking it. So... We'll see. Nexus going down for both players, though. So it's a core first. Nexus expand out of Little Reaper. And a Nexus first out of the Archaic. Little Reaper will be able to get much faster tech out of this if he so desires. So we'll see if he does opt for that or not. Stalker is on the way initially. Warp Gate coming down as well. No proxy pile odds for either player at the moment. Uh, and the Archaic even scouted around quite a bit for proxy pylons, just in case. Second gateway coming down for Little Reaper. No tech yet, though. That's really where he'd have his advantage here with the core first opening. But may have just opted for it to be able to get stalkers out in case his opponent tries to Void Ray all at him again. A lot of times players do uh, sort of counter what happened in the last game, whether or not it happens in the next game. Robo on the way for both players. Warp Gate coming down. So that would you see that much faster. Nexus out of the Archaic, and he is building probes. He's up four workers at the moment. Well, now he's not building probes. Making a fool out of me. The Reaper is firing up probes of his own. So if the Archaic doesn't make more probes here soon, he's actually going to uh, lose that economy advantage he got out of that very quick Nexus. Won't be the end of the world, obviously. As he is chronoing out his own Warp Gate. 
and getting a second gateway. So it's actually going to be a Robo Twilight out of Little Reaper. Should be able to make lots of tech there. Perhaps Blink tech as well is always an option. Pylon on the way out of the Archaic. Even a uh, shield battery as well. That pylon behind it, just in case the main pylon it gets sniped. So we do see an Immortal on the way for the Archaic. It was actually falling behind in that probe count. He's going to be able to catch back up now. It's like both players take turns making probes. The Archaic makes probes and gets ahead, and then he lets Archaic get ahead, or the Little Reaper get ahead for a little bit, and the Little Reaper's like, okay, now it's your turn. This time now they're both making probes, so that's a good a good thing to see. We do have Blink on the way out of Little Reaper, a very fast absorber to see what's going on on the other side of the map, or maybe just worried about Dark Templars. Who knows? But with Little Reaper almost gets hunted down. Archaic pulls back a little bit early, but does go forward and kill it after all. So the Stalkers continue to get warped in for Little Reaper. He's making a warp prism, so I think it's going to be like four Stalkers in a prism kind of play, potentially, here. So we do see uh, an Observer on the way for the Archaic now as well. That blink is going to be a nice helper here, but now Charge on the way very quickly for the Archaic as well. We see charge lots very strong in this matchup, so you can get out Archons or Colossi. Although Archons, obviously, the more popular choice. The Archaic will narrowly miss the Prism moving out. Pretty even on workers are our players at the moment. This Blink will finish up in the next 30 seconds. Blink has a very long researching upgrade. I believe it's like 129 seconds or something like that. So definitely takes quite a while to get it there, but almost there now. Charge obviously a lot quicker. So even though the Twilight Council was much later for the Archaic, his, uh, his charge is going to finish up around the same time as the Blink of Little Reaper because it's just a little bit faster to research. So... More Prism of Little Reaper, chilling. No third base on the way for either player quite yet, but Little Reaper is adding on three additional gateways to go up to five. Three gateways down at the moment for the Archaic, who is now expanding. So Little Reaper sees that expansion with Blink Stalkers. You can, uh, you can aggress this base pretty easily and pretty safely, I would say, as uh, Blink Stalker is always able to get out pretty much. With these three additional gateways coming down, I'd like to see just a full warping of Stalkers and then try and just charge on that Nexus, get up close to it, fire off a few volleys, kill it, and blink on out of there, maybe. Will we see Charge coming down behind this for Little Reaper? Not sure just yet. Is the Archaic a little hesitant to move down to that third base until the shield batteries are finished up? At the same time, though, if Little Reaper waits until the shield batteries are finished up, he might be able to get on top of that base. And now just thinks better of it, actually, I guess. I, I really would like to see him get active with that blink. Blink is better than Charge in the early game because it provides value if you utilize it, but Little Reaper is not utilizing it just yet. Uh, charge, there's not as much opportunity for value there. So, so that's why you generally see players get it second. But if you're not going to use Charge or Blink anyways, then Charge may be the better option until you get out Zealots. Now, Blink is on the way for the Archaic. Little Reaper down in Army Supply. A little bit down in Workers. Third bases are finished for both players, though. As, uh, Little Reaper is going to go ahead and uh, chrono all of his gateways, I believe it was. Yeah, indeed he is. Seems like we see a good bit out of him just to get out those extra units, but it's not going to matter. I mean, there's two Immortals and a lot of charge lots against unupgraded Stalkers with just Blink and four shield batteries. Yeah, and we're just going to see Little Reaper's army go into the meat grinder here. And that background pylon, very helpful for the Archaic. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like Blink is decent as an all-in tool, but it needs to be a lot faster if you're planning on all-inning like that. Uh, it's it's not something that you all-in this late with. That's what Glaives and Charge are for. And once the player has out this many Immortals, that many Zealots, it's just not going to get enough value here. It's a good ability, but I don't think Little Reaper was utilizing it in the best possible way, necessarily. He's trying to get damage done now, but just floating a lot of money, not really getting any tech of his own behind this. And uh, just in a really unfortunate spot here is it's now 14 army supply to 60. 
Or the Archaic is going to have Blink soon of his own. Lunar Reaper is forced to head home. And the Archaic with a uh, very smooth hold there. Getting gases on his third base, doubling the supply of his opponent, almost all of it in army. Uh, we'll be able to just move across the map and kill him here. I'm honestly surprised it's taken this long to do so. Maybe worried about that prism, but now that he's confident, it's gone. We'll head across the map, and I think just close out this series. Oh, 50 supply here. Adding on five more gateways to go up to 10. He'll be able to warp in twice the amount of units as Little Reaper at that point. And uh, just so many immortals, so many charge lots. Uh, this is an army you'd really need Archons to beat, and Little Reaper is hopelessly far away from Archons at this point. Shield Battery Overcharge will defend for a few seconds, but honestly, I'm pretty sure the Archaic could just jump on that. Um, just not doing it out of uh, habit. <laughs> and indeed, he does go in. The Blinkers, bl blinkers blink past, but uh, will get cleaned up, and GG is called... All right, let's bring uh, E.T. back on here. We can do our interviews real quick. Yeah, I'm trying to get let's my camera going again. It looks see. like my phone actually died, so I may not be able to do so. <laughs> no problem. All right, let's go talk to the players really quick here. All right, so let's talk to you first, Little Reaper. What went wrong in your games? Tell us what you think. I don't know. Uh, the first game, uh, I accidentally blocked the gas and I couldn't get any gas, and it's a little lot. So, and that's one of the things. And I should have worked in on the first game on the when I was attacking with the sure shots. What and about uh, uh, game two with the uh, void race, the the void ray game? What do you think went wrong for you? I think I should have um, gone faster, and. He got attacks faster instead of waiting. And game three looked pretty good for you, but how come you didn't want to attack the third base? It was free for you to kill it, but you, instead you went all the way around. Why did you do that? Because I, I, with my observer, I, I saw I saw him like move a little bit right, so so I thought he was, he was going there. So yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you know, at this at this uh, level, I think you just attack and then you run away. You have blink. So there's no way he can get you, right? So yeah. for future games, you really need to take your advantage. Uh, I think game two, you could have won too uh, yeah. with the Void Rays, but you you were so afraid of three Void Rays. You had 24 Stalkers. You should, <laughs> should, you should have killed it, and then you, you would have won game two as well. Uh, anyway, what do you think you need to do to improve for next season? Uh, like, like my macro, like make more stuff. And, uh, my common sense. What do you mean by that? Uh, like, knowing what's what, like, 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 comes, like, if something happens, I should do that. How do you, um, get better with your, quote, common sense? By doing what? What do you need to do? Uh, maybe play more ladder games. Probably. Oh, play more ladder games? So how many, how many ladder games do you play? Not that many. Well, what's not that many? How many? Like three. Three? How long? When? Like uh, really short games. Three today or the week or the month? What? Like about mostly. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Et, you got any questions for Little Reaper? Yeah, I guess with the common sense, uh, I think you're kind of referring to, like, game knowledge, you know, kind of knowing, you know, like, it seems yeah. like the top players see, like, one or two things and then instantly know exactly how many probes their opponents have and how many, you know, what tech they're going for. And you're like, you literally just saw a gateway. And, you're, you know, so that kind of stuff, obviously, yeah, you just have to play a lot of games to get that game knowledge built up. But I think you had a really good performance this season. Um, your aggressive builds obviously looked very strong. Um, I think the archaic just... As an opponent in particular, right, he, he tends to all in you before you can really get the chance to get your aggression going. We saw that kind of in game two. You were trying to go for that blink all in, but then 
got all in instead. So mm. uh, I think just a pretty strong opponent against your style, unfortunately. But uh, still great games. Like KJ said, you had a really good chance. So uh, I look forward to seeing you next season, man. Thank you. All right. And uh, we got the arcade. Congratulations for winning. You know, any comments on your on the series? What do you think went wrong? What went right? Uh, so first game, uh, I've been practicing that timing for a bit. I uh, seemed really fun to do, so I did it. Uh, second game, I played really badly actually. Uh, I'm not sure how I went that. Actually, um, I think the turning point was when he blinked my base, but he targeted the pylon instead of my point race. I just overcharged. Uh, yeah, if he had just there. killed your void race instead of the pylons, he would have won there. But, but you know, that's fine. You took game two. And then game three, tell us about game three. Uh, game three, I just planned to go just macro, straight up macro. And when I scouted and saw he was doing the same thing, I'm like, okay, well, uh, uh, I guess I'll just get a third base and uh, I just macro. And I did. Uh, I made, I, I don't, I'm actually not sure if, I made too many big mistakes there, um, but I, de I did get supply blocked when he uh, sent in his war prism and it was just, it was just Got it, got it. All right, ET. Um, yeah. So I guess yeah. Game two. Um, you said I kind of didn't play too well. Was there anything in particular you felt you did wrong with like the micro or anything? Or I, I feel like that build maybe is just a little bit weaker. Is that kind of like why you felt it didn't go so well? Because obviously with the shield battery nerf and the void ray nerf. Is that is that kind of what you were talking about there? Um, kind of. I mean, I lost a Void Rays when I really shouldn't have, and I, uh, it also, like, just piled on top of that he went, like, uh, 2k Stalker, and it, it, just, it just didn't go well for me for that rush. Right, yeah. Yeah, it seemed to me as well, it's like, it hurts a lot more when you're losing one or two Void Rays, because they take so much longer to build as well, right? So it takes longer to even get that Void Ray back, but uh, I, I think still pretty good on the defense overall. Um... Yeah, well played overall. I have too many questions about the games. All your stuff is fairly straightforward. I guess the in game one that you said you practiced that all in, is the proxy base specifically part of that all in or the hidden base, or is that just something you decided to go for there? Uh it is a six racks. I'm not sure I would have enough I I'm not sure I would have enough comedy economy on two bases, so I wouldn't put the third base. Okay, perfect. Alright, that was my only question, KJ. All right, and that'll do it. Uh, you'll face the winner of our next match, so congratulations, and I'm sure you'll watch this uh, next match. All right, thank you, guys. All right, guys. Uh, our next match, which is what I was talking about, is Criminal versus Scion on the upper bracket right here. And the winner will face the Archaic. So let's bring him here right now. Let's bring him to the, uh, let's bring him in there. Oh. All right. Sorry, I was having uh, issues with my sound here. We have Criminal versus Cyan here with us now. What's up, guys? Uh, it looks like Criminal somehow got kicked out of the voice call. <laughs> oh, let's bring him back in. But we do have Cyan, so I guess we could we could chat with him. Uh, yeah, I can chat with Cyan while, while you get Criminal back. So Cyan, obviously, uh, he had probably the toughest opponent in the bracket to get here, so we're probably feeling pretty good to be here facing Criminal. Um, how do you feel about your chances tonight against such an aggressive player? It's, it's definitely going to be tough against him. Uh, he's good multi- Multi-prong harass. He knows how to do all that. He's got good, uh, really good openings, good mechanics. So I practiced some with Nihilus a little bit and a couple other guys. So we'll, you know, we'll see. All right, perfect. Yeah, and uh, so practiced with uh, Ghost Chant, you said, or, or Nihilus. So obviously he's able to help you out there. It's always nice to have those uh, those practice opponents. Um, KJ, did you have any questions for Cyan? Yeah. So Cyan, you know. You've known about this matchup. It's against Terran. How do you feel about that matchup in general? I've, I've never really liked it unless I can get to the, the mid to late game. Then I, I should fare a lot better. Uh, early early part, I just I don't know. I just no good against Terran in the early game for some reason. 
Got it, got it. And um, how you feeling overall about tonight, though? Anyway, you know, just just maybe not the games or anything like that. You feeling refreshed? You feeling tired? Because you know, normally <laughs> tired. when you hop on these, you're tired. Are you tired again? <laughs> I am. I am very tired again. We've we've been have a lot of stuff going on at work. We've been doing shutdowns and you know all the electrical shutdowns. So I've been dealing ah, with I that. See, I you see. Know. Kitty That's cats got softball. Is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> FSL is, uh, you know, family friendly StarCraft League. So, you know, we have to kind of juggle the, the times when we play, juggle our schedule when we can actually play Lather. Uh, ET, you got any questions for. I think Criminal's back. Yeah, we've got Criminal here now, so we can talk to him a little bit. So, uh, Criminal, how are you feeling about tonight's match against Cyan? Not really confident about this match. I haven't played any Protoss in a while. I tried the ladder. Probably I only had maybe five Protosses <laughs> in all the games since last week. It's all Zergs in my uh, in my uh, level. <laughs> ah, you just ran into a lot of Zergs, huh? All right. Yeah. Well, you know that may even things out in terms of opportunities to practice against the races, the race here that you guys are matching up. Uh, Et, any final words, questions for the either of these? Um, no, I, I think we're pretty much good to go. All right, it's a best of five, guys. So that's the good news, right? Okay. Uh, nice, good nice. luck, okay, gentlemen. Go. We'll we'll server deafen and mute you guys. And while we do that, we can show the uh, map selections. Let's go show that real quick. These yeah, we can take a look at those. So, as we've got, uh, yeah, there's the playoff bracket. And then for our map selections, it looks like we had Hardwire and Blackburn vetoed. Um, I think we've had Cyan talk about not really liking Blackburn in the past, so not too shocked to see that get vetoed by him. Um, and then Pride of Altar is kind of a funky uh, first game to select there out of Criminal. Um, a lot of people feel a little uncomfortable on that map as well, I think. So, yeah. interesting to see him going straight for it. Well, you know, he's off meta. He just does things from what he remembers. He's mostly a Wings of Liberty player with lots of uh, practice in micro and medevac drops, bio stuff. So that's what I expect here, regardless of what the map is or what the meta is or if there's shield battery or whether there's, you know, mothership core, etc. <laughs> so. Right, yeah. Obviously, we've seen a lot of very aggressive builds out of Criminal. Um so we'll see how he does. He says he wasn't able to practice TVP much. And Cyan was able to practice PVT quite a bit against Ghost Chant there. So I think that should help him. I, I would generally favor Criminal here, obviously. Um, a very strong player in this. Uh, I mean, it, it wouldn't be shocking if Criminal were to just, you know, make the full run right through the Code S. Yep. Um, with how much he's improved over the last uh, few That's months true. getting back into this. So with that... Uh, it should be a, a good chance for him against Cyan, but Cyan did get a lot of practice, so we'll see how he manages to do here. But here we are, we're loading in. You are watching season so what do you five. think? 3-0? Three, 3-1? Three, I think I'll go 3-1 um, in favor of the man in the bottom right. But up here in the top left, we've got the red Protoss player. He is Cyan. Yeah, and, and, and for his me, opponent. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, we got the 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 blue Terran player. He is criminal. So three one. That's I'm almost gonna go that, but I'm gonna go and say three two because I'm hoping for five games. Yeah, always nice to see. It's funny. Um, it feels like a lot of these playoff games have been even more one-sided than when those same people or teams played each other in the group stages. Like, we've had a lot of 3-0s, it feels like, um, and 3-1s. Um, so it would be nice to get a game five. But we'll see what they managed to do here as uh, Criminal did make his first barracks at home at the very least. We'll see what he ends up going for here. Gas is on the way for both players. And like we said, we have that gold base, but I really don't expect to see a quick gold out of either player. Um, Criminal, it just doesn't seem to be a style with how aggressive he is. And Cyan, I feel like it'd be a little crazy to go for a very quick exposed gold base against a player you know is super aggressive like Criminal. So we'll see what they opt for, though. This Criminal is scouting out, looking around for any proxies. So good, uh, good discipline there out of him. 
So Reaper is on the way, making that orbital command as well. And it looks like we'll be going for at least two bases in this game. Uh, you know what I noticed with Criminal? And I keep forgetting this, but he scouts excessively. He just does not want to lose to some proxies. Because he wants to get a game where he has two bases, lots of Raxes, and make it his style, right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, up here in the top left, we see, I feel like Cyan playing very safe here. Um, <laughs> Cybercore's going to be done before the natural base is oh, even on the way. Man. He's even making a Stalker, so Criminal's going to be in a pretty good macro spot here, honestly, with uh, that natural base coming down. I gotta say, I mean, I like the adjustment for playing against an aggressive player, but if you go for the probe scout, it's not like Criminal walled him in so he couldn't see that natural base going down. He could have scouted that yeah. um, pretty easily. So I do like adjusting to your opponent, but you still got to do that scouting because otherwise they can adjust to you, adjusting to them. And that's really what we're kind of seeing here, I think, is Criminal going a little bit more macro focused. Um, looks like it is going to be a Hellion build potentially. Um, as that SCV that was scouting moves out onto the map, maybe to make... I'd like to see maybe a proxy starport. Yeah, I um, think he's just scouting, seen... man. He's just uh, a scouter. He didn't even block the na natural. If you notice, he was there. He could have done an eBay block, but he didn't even do that. So he just really wants to scout. Right, yeah. And he will see, I mean, second gateway. You probably are pretty concerned about a proxy when you see a Nexus that late, double gas, only one extra gateway just now going down. You're probably like, where's the tech? Yeah. <laughs> um, so he might think there is a proxy out somewhere. I really do like with Hellion builds, um, and something we see at the top level in TVP, Hellion builds, you got to have that proxy starport, I think, because it makes yep. such a big difference on the timing that you hit with the Hellions. It's the difference between, I think it's like, three units with a standard like Protoss build and five units because um, you just get an extra warp and cycle you wouldn't have otherwise have mm -hmm. uh, and that's a lot when it comes to aliens <laughs> so uh, he is doing it at home though we'll see if he even he might not even make a medevac um, initially as he actually funnily enough he started concussive and then decided against it and went for stim instead it looks like that's a mistake um, he's always yeah, I think maybe just misclicking uh, I, I was about to be excited I'm like oh we're going to see like some sort of weird you know like TVZ build with the uh, Marauder Hellion or Marauder Hellbat thing, but in TVP. But now, just a little bit of a misclick, I think. Charge is now on the way. I guess good that he catches that misclick, you know, and doesn't try to stim in at some point. And instead, oh, always got his bad. concussive. <laughs> so, good catch. Um, again, Cyan scouting is really kind of lacking. Um, you should have. You know, those two extra gateways could be on the low ground. They could be walling those Hellions out pretty easily. Um, instead, he's building them up in his main base very conservatively. Uh, this is actually going to be a mind drop follow-up. So we're going to see aggressive out of Criminal, but it's a little more harass, looking for damage on probe specifically, rather than looking for, like, the straight-up kill. With like We see a lot of, like, you know, Marine Marauder kind of timings out of him. Yeah. Instead, it looks like he's just going to be trying to get a lot of damage with those Hellions and Mines. Uh, and actually waiting with the Hellions, I think, so the Mind Drop can go in as well? Yep, I think so. I don't know. I feel like with Hellions, you got to get in there because they really fall off in terms of, you know, beating Protoss units. I mean, there's going to be Charge out now against the Helli Hellions. So <laughs> those Zealots, which would have been dead weights, are now going to be very, very useful. Um, now, Blink not being on the way does hurt against Mind Drops because that's obviously very helpful. But Charge still pretty useful. And with the amount of units out now, I mean, this mind drop is a pretty late mind drop because obviously instead of being able to go right as the medevac pops and just rushing that out, you go for four Hellions before you can even start building your mines. So that's two extra build cycles. Um, there's so many units that he can pretty easily just target down the mines before they even get burrowed if he reacts quick enough. That said, his units are all in the natural base and the mind drop is now coming into the main. No reaction just yet out of Cyan. Oh, man. This is going to be a lot of probe kills here. He's just going to clear out this mineral line instead of going to the other base. Yeah, but now the Hellions are going to come in, and Cyan moved every unit. And this is just, um, I think this is something we see in Code S players probably would have handled this a lot this better. Oh, rally there. Oh, yeah, it does miss rally it. But there is a Zealot on top, and there is a shield battery. But shield batteries don't help if they're one-shotting your probes. It does try and warp in more, but we've already seen 20 probes go down. Now up to 24. We'll see around 26, maybe. Oh, a little bit of poor targeting there at the end. So it does only get the 24, but still up uh, 29 workers against a Protoss is a pretty nice feeling as a Terran. Yeah, and he's forced to just go for it. 
you know, Cyan could have picked up, uh, actually, Criminal could have picked up those mines. He didn't do that. He's a little bit off, you can tell. But I think he did right. enough damage. He just has to survive this huge push. Yeah, it's a big push, and Criminal, it feels like, was really expecting a big rush into Colossus or something. He's already got out, like, three, four, yeah, three Vikings with two more on the way, which obviously aren't very helpful. I guess they can take down Warp Prisms, but I don't think there's even a Prism out for Cyan. A little unfortunately, if he had a Prism, um, I feel yeah, actually kind of decent about this push. Because yep. Criminal did not have his units in position. That bunker could have given... Could have been busted pretty easily, and then you have your four gateways warping four more zealots. You got like ten zealots, a lot of stalkers. They have blink now, but as it is, I think uh, it's not getting that damage. And now, yeah, criminal's going to be in a really good spot. And these Vikings, they're just going to go and land. Watch, this is going to infuriate many Protosses. But he does have blink. Look at this. I didn't even know. Yeah, he got does that. blink into the main base. Followed up charge with that. Um, I think he actually uh, got the charge based off of what Neutrophil said in one of his previous matches. Just really likes having charge against those early aggressive timings. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is funny because oh, you look at F2. like... Oh, yeah, it does F2 it back. So that's nice enough. But you're killing a piddling of probes and SCV, or SCVs, I should say, against a lot of probes that went down. So I'm just not sure that six SCVs, seven SCVs is worth it for nine stalkers. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a lot of stalkers going down. At the same time, Cyan's even on army supply, and uh, Criminal's gone for all these relatively useless Vikings against a player who's going for a lot of charged zealots and storm. So, compositionally, Cyan will actually be in a pretty decent spot. He did heavily delay that command center. Criminal has not put the SCV back on that command center. He's actually got two deep depots depots currently not building that should have been building like they were just kind of sitting there waiting for an scv you can see the one there command center um yep. that's finally getting going um but that's that's a big deal because i mean you can already see in his main base he's already mined out three of his mineral patches out of the eight and uh two more of those are going to be gone soon so that third base being down this much later hurts a lot um, it really just means that those 50s have an scvs it's not going to matter that you have an economy advantage in terms of workers because you're only going to have enough patches to mine off of like 40. Um, so a little unfortunate there that he didn't refuel that. I don't know what to say. Rebuild that quicker. Uh, we do have Storm on the way. The tank takes a while to siege though, and that's what we're talking about, or you talked about with that uh, a little bit rusty, a little slow out of criminal here, but a super slow reaction. I mean, trying to snipe Metabax instead of dealing with the attack in the main base is obviously a mistake here, and does kick him down 14 more workers. Oh man, and see ya. I'm out of here. Yep, he does leave, doesn't even lose a single Viking, um, but Storm is the great equalizer in uh, a lot of matchups, so. No ghosts on the way out of Criminal yet. He's actually going into Thor's. It feels like Criminal <laughs> is trying to play a bit more macro than he's used to, and he doesn't really know the compositions. Because uh, Thor's are like, you maybe get these against Tempest, but that's like another 10 minutes down the line. Um, and that, I mean, Thor's are about as bad of a unit as you can pick against Zealots. And it's not just that you're getting Thor's, it's that by getting Thor's, you're not making tanks or Widow Mines, which are what you actually want against a heavy charge lot style. Um, so definitely that's nice for him. A quick fourth base out of Criminal I do like, and obviously, make no mistake, he's still up a lot in supply. Um, but he's not that high up in army supply, and there is Storm out with no real counter to it. Oh, and Charge yeah. Zealots with no real counter to it. But it really comes down to can Cyan hit those Storms. It's not yep. just about having the units with the fancy pink bars on them. It's about actually um, hitting there those Storms. Is. We'll get that question answered in a few here. Yeah, he's moving in now, and I mean, those Vikings, there's, he's still looking for Colossi. I mean, that's the thing, is like, Thors and Vikings are only a little bit better than Deadweight here um, in these kinds of fights. So we'll see what happens. It does get alerted to this attack. There isn't a shield battery in position here. Big storm, massive storm out of Cyan. Oh, but he's not continuing to storm. Needs to restorm that. Needs to morph those into Archons once the... Oh, but he's not actually targeting the Vikings onto the High Templar. Do morph hey, into four Archons. Good enough, man. Um, that was a pretty good fight, but still, the problem behind it now is you're still pretty far down on workers. Granted, he got much closer in worker count now. Now it's only 26 army supply to 60. Yeah, man. The last attack, he was down to 20 workers. And look at this. 46 That's workers. True. Just like that. That's the power of Protoss Chrono Boost, maybe? 
Chrono Boost, and also, like I said, um, I mean, there wasn't much point in Criminal making workers for quite a while there, um, so he's able to catch up, and then, yeah, obviously just being able to make 29 workers. That's the crazy thing to me at the pro level, is you see these games where, like, Rain or Acero goes in on Maru, kills, like, 40 SCVs, and then they're down 10 SCVs from where they were before, oh, and it's like, here it goes. how did you make 30 SCVs? But, anyways... Trying to go in, not going to go in. This is good, though. He sees those Immortals, or uh, Thors. I'm getting ahead of myself. He makes Immortals because he sees the Thors, which is really good. Um, immortals obviously kind of just annihilate Thors pretty hard. Liberators are on the way, though. He's even getting a Ghost Academy, so Criminal's trying to get the counter to that Storm out. Obviously, it's a pretty hard counter to use, especially because, like I said, it feels like Criminal definitely is trying to switch up his style here pretty significantly from what it is normally. And so... You know, when you're already playing something you're not used to playing, trying to do ghosts and micro those, that's not going to be very easy at all. Um, and Cyan is looking okay here. He's not any farther down in supply than he was five minutes ago. And that's yeah. good. That, yeah. That's really good. Pretty, good. pretty good for him, especially if he gets... Oh, man, the reaction is a little slow, though. Yeah, he's out of position. And this is something... Um, <laughs> I've talked about with um, instability a lot in trying to like oh. poacher and whatnot is it's that vision on the map that you need. Um, you'll see a lot of times as you get higher and higher up in levels, they'll have a zealot in the top. They'll have pylons ringing their bases, zealots out here and there, even probes. Just putting one or two zealots out, you know, to the top right and the bottom right of your bases or bottom left of your bases here is super nice because then your army can sit right where it is. And if you see the army coming in from the bottom left, you can move down there. If you see the army coming in from the top right, you can move there. And if you see two, you can split your army. Uh, so it's very important to get that map vision out. And unfortunately, very difficult as well. It's not something a lot of players are able to do on the fly very easily. We do have ghosts out now. Cyan is aware of it, though. Uh, and is making a lot of Immortals. I'd like to just see Disruptors as well. Immortals, obviously, the more simple, like, direct counter to Thors, but Disruptors able. do very yeah, well against Thors as well. One thing is... And... Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very impressed how Cyan has managed to get this game to this point. Because he was... He lost so much. Yeah, yeah, Twice. it's very true. What's kind of weird is that... Criminal's doing a very strange composition here. He's going like mech bio. He's got seven Marines on the way, but also Hellbats and Vikings, and he's got Ghosts, and he's got Thors. And them, too. Yeah, he's down 50 army supply. Is Cyan. Oh, oh and gosh. the big EMPs are going to come down here. No shield be battery. Really careful about this. That was his weakness. He Remember that? Oh, man, he still doesn't have a shield battery. Yeah, we did talk about this in previous series. That's the big thing with Cyan. He doesn't make batteries, but huge storms. Obviously, they don't help against the... Thor's much, but there's still three Immortals standing here. If there's a battery overcharge, he wins this fight. As it yeah. is, I don't think he's going to. Oh my um, gosh. I, don't think, I think just two or three shield batteries, not even yeah. battery overcharge would have been the tipping point there, but he doesn't make them. And uh, that's very unfortunate there. Oh, and Liberator's even coming into the natural. So, I mean, even if he had won this fight still, that would have been another mineral line gone. Wow. So, we know he pretty unfortunate there. Without min uh, warpers, so. <laughs> yep, it's true. And GG is called. But let's be let's be honest on that one. You know, Cyan lost that game on the first um, Widow Mind drop, right? Right. Um, what I'd say that really shows is that if Cyan doesn't take damage in the early game, he's going to absolutely annihilate Criminal if he tries to go for a macro game. I think. That's um, right. He's a lot stronger in the macro than Criminal is, um, which it's good that Criminal's working on that. I think that's important to have to be able to pull that out in these kinds of tournaments. Um, but it's not there yet. Um, but obviously, when you kill 24 workers with your first attack, it doesn't matter if your opponent's better at macro Ooh. than you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're mean, gonna be able to clean it up anyways. Did anyone catch how many workers were killed on that last one? That was insane, right? But anyway, game two. Yeah, and obviously even the um the the Vikings killing like another seventeen workers. I mean, it was probably a good even before that big final fight. It was probably forty or fifty workers that went down for Cyan. So that's some massive damage. Um, but it is going to be two thousand atmospheres. Um, a little bit easier of a map to defend three base, I think. Setups so should help against that harass. But yeah, Cyan, I think just not being as versed in where to put his units um, against those kinds of styles and not really scouting. I mean, he went with the initial probe, but. There wasn't an observer follow-up. There wasn't an adept follow-up that you see a lot. Things like that. But we'll see if he manages to do better here. It is the uh, next match. We're going right in.
Yeah, this was actually, you know, in, to me, Cyan looks better than I thought, considering. That's true, um, but we are here looking at him in the upper right-hand side, the red Protoss player he is. Cyan. Yep, Cyan is the Protoss. Cyan. And the blue Terran in the bottom left he is. Criminal. So I want to say something here, you know, he, he has the power of the Protoss in him. He just has to survive the first few minutes. Yeah, it's true. And I will say, though, it's like, yes, Cyan looked pretty good compared to, I think, what a lot of expectations for him were. At the same time, Criminal was not playing like Criminal plays, <laughs> so to speak, right? So it's like... I don't know how much of it was Cyan playing super, super well, although he definitely looks more improved. But at the same time, it was Criminal trying to switch things up and looking a little weird. I mean, Thor is that early on or just not uh, a thing um, in, in TVP, unless you're going mech. And even then, I think it's mainly yeah. not a thing until a little bit later on. So I think that did give Cyan a better chance. Cyan still played very well from behind. I think Storm's a great move whenever you're behind on yep. workers. Um, and obviously, did almost make the comeback, but still no shield batteries. <laughs> we really need to see those shield <laughs> batteries. Could, I think he could have come back, <laughs> honestly. The shield batteries and even just, you know, reacting better to the mind drops or any of the probe harassment. I think he, he edges Criminal. Yeah, I mean, having battery overcharge there. Um, I mean, Criminal, he tried to go for those um, EMPs, but he cast like four of them and only one hit any of Cyan's units and they didn't actually hit the High Templar, so. Huh. You had a really good opportunity there, and I think a battery might have been enough to tip the scales. I mean, Immortals with battery overcharges, it just looks dumb. Uh, or it <laughs> looks even crazy. did the Disruptors, like you said, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true as well. I think Disruptors were needed there. Once you see the Thors, I think you really need to get that Disruptor tech. And obviously, he had double Robo, so yeah. even just two Disruptors there makes a big difference because Ghosts are really bad against Disruptors, and so are Thors. And he really didn't have much of anything else. And oh, you already have a few supply High block. Templar out. Cyan oh. supply blocked. Oh, you can tell. Oh, it's because he's proxying not... a pylon. Oh. All right. Well, then he got spotted. This but... is the worst guy. This, this is the worst <laughs> As we've guy. Talked to... about, oh, yeah. he canceled it. Nice. At least he was able now... to cancel it. I don't know that that's actually the right move there. Because now you're supply blocked for an extra 20 seconds. <laughs> Um, so. Which means this is the last probe that's going to be made. That's like a whole extra probe or two. I don't know. I guess maybe it's best to cancel it. Yeah, he saves 100. I'm really not sure. 100 in opportunity mining. Right, exactly. That kind of thing. And then also just um, being able to get out, you know, a stalker or an adept. I mean, if Criminal went straight across the map with the Reaper after that, um, which I think he should have done. I mean, once you see the canceled pylon, it's like, okay, now you got time to go across worried. and do some stuff. Another proxy or something. Yeah, you know, the double proxy. It's happened. It could happen again. So, But he will have the stalker out because Criminal took so long. But if Criminal had gone straight across as soon as that pylon gets canceled, that stalker is, I mean, like a probe or two goes down pretty easily there as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what the best move is there, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, Criminal, the best move is definitely not trying to proxy Criminal because that is just not something he's ever going to let you get away with, yep. it would seem. Um, at least not a proxy in a more obvious location. Um, obviously, it's like... The, you think he's yeah, I think he's trying to do the Void Rays. Yeah. That's, I think that's the Void Ray position. Um, but yeah, against a player like Criminal, maybe he just doesn't know how religiously Criminal scouts. Uh, it's you know an easy detail to miss if you are reviewing their play and stuff. Well, per, uh, Criminal also mentioned he loses to the Void Ray build, so I know he's looking for that every game against Protoss. So he, he's never going to let that happen from what he said, right? Remember the uh, right, yeah. interview he did at one point? Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. Um, so obviously trying to play to that and uh, able to uh, defend against it Dude, he even in this game. Uh, SCV or he just forgot about it or what? <laughs> or is it yeah. spotter? might be a spotter as uh, we actually have a lot of blink stalkers coming Ooh. out now uh, I believe we have warp gate yep warp gate is finished up robo on the way now as well criminals just scouting around mm. problem though man this blink stalker timing is gonna be right when stim's already done so it's true and the other big problem here and this is something i talked about a little bit but i think i got interrupted in the last game by in-game events but um <laughs> with charge the quick charge it's in theory a worse opening because 
blink stalkers just have all that potential for value so that's why you see it at the top level but at yep. this level you're not going to be like the reason it's valuable here is because these seven stalkers should be outside criminals door and they kill three or four marines right here and then they yeah. pull back and then they kill another marine and another marine by the time you get across the map you have half the units you started with as the terran if you're e. not doing that and yeah. you're not building shield batteries, by the way. ET, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. The weakness yeah. of Cyan is about to be more apparent in game. Yeah. Game. And funnily enough, this is almost like it's almost like Criminal took this build from um, from uh, Chiampone a little bit. It's yes. similar. Yes. I think a little more oh macro oriented. Oh, my gosh. But sees all those juicy stalkers and the shield, shield batteries battery. just now oh starting. Oh, my god. Yeah. Yeah, if you're it. not across the map with blink then this happens um stalkers just aren't that good in a direct fight they have to be picking off units bit by bit same time though stem did run out he's having to over stem quite a bit um i think oh, the three racks wait, is really only as powerful as it is if you have marauders with it and that's not something criminal included here and i will say criminal he went for a build here that needed to get more damage based yeah. off what we saw in the last game this um, is an army trade this is not bad not terrible yeah i mean that should have been a game over thing situation here but exactly and based on what we saw in the previous game with how much better cyan was doing as the game went on criminal's not going to win off of army trades he's going to win off of keeping his opponent down and out for the entire game and he did not do that here he killed some stalkers um i don't think cyan was particularly emotionally attached to those anyways and uh, now charge is finishing up he's going to be able to get a third base out he's got five gateways two more on the way he's going to go up to seven gates um, and Cyan, it's funny, I feel like a lot of his weaknesses are just things that didn't exist, you know, five years ago, and he's just never really gotten used to using them, like shield batteries, well, he's um, like, and he's stuff like, like that. Well, he's like Criminal. Criminal existed back in the Wings of Liberty era, that's when he was good. He was, that's right, when he got exactly. his masters, like, long, long time ago. And he's been right. at the diamond level for a while, and in fact, he was at gold level when he first signed up, so... Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, we don't see cyclones out of him. We don't see any units that have been added since Wings. So you know, it's similar in that way. Um, Terran doesn't have any, you know, shield batteries to check and see if he wouldn't make those either. But okay, this probe going out to scout the third. Uh, not really scout, build the third. It will get denied. So that's nice though to know that that's coming in. Um, and even does use a scan that won't really get anything done for him here. So not too bad for Cyan. I think he could just move out and take that fight with that amount of bio. Yeah. This is a really um. I'll call it bold move out of criminal to go out with no medevacs and, and all this file. there. That's the big thing. I don't know why he's staying in there. He's been seen. Yeah, you killed a probe, you just leave, right? Oh, but yeah. now the army's even going to get cut in half by the ultimate enemy, Pathing. Uh, but I don't but think Cyan's going to see it or move out. Big. So. Yeah, he doesn't see it. And Cyan, he's still playing a little scared. Um, he's not taking a third base again as quick as he could have. I mean, I feel like you that probe dies you go oh there's an army there and there's not much you just move and kill him real quick um, but he's yeah. a little worried so he's taking all this time he got like two or one or two extra warp ends of units in in this time that's a lot of time to not have your third base going down and criminals has already landed um, and this time around we don't have storm we don't have a robo bay we don't have anything for splash damage uh, and at a certain point bio just crests this point where it doesn't matter how many charge lots and how many stalkers you have yeah, that's just not going to cut to it the next level which is splash damage imagine yep. if he didn't lose his stalkers he had a shield battery and you know he didn't even reveal that he had blink when he was fighting initially there he didn't reveal that he had blink. So. right yeah oh my goodness an interesting oh. turret with the cute turret placements out of criminal we even take out that warp prism uh, wow, prism. I love criminals that he's looking for damage it. Oh, is he going to yeah. be out of position? No! He will crush this pro Terran army. Yeah, this would be a great spot for him to get damage. But at the same time, he could kill this planetary of criminal pretty easily. Um, and then recall home still, I think, and defend. And that's that looks like what he's going to do. I think he's going to go on this and then head home. Um, we'll see how much damage he takes on the other side of the map, though, while he's at it. I think Cyan has a much better army at the moment, almost entirely because... Criminal's oh, not making medevacs for man. some reason. Yeah, yeah Criminal has double starport, but he's not using it yet. Um, has zero medevacs, so every stem he does to get damage on this side of the map damages that army more and more. Um, one it? of the big yeah. reasons... Yeah, he's going to go in. I think this is the right choice when you see no medevacs, which I'm not sure if that's even why he's doing it, but the whole don't base trade a Terran thing is for two different reasons. Thanks. Floating buildings yeah, and medevacs. Medevacs just heal your units over time, and so you can stem and still have all this extra value. 
Yeah. Um, but he doesn't have any medevac, so that, that aspect isn't going to be there for this base trade. Um, I think oh. if he warped in at the third base rather than the main base with his elves, that would have been good. But now he's trying to blink up. I think that was maybe a bit of a mistake. And uh, oh, yeah. Oh, he just miscontrolled this. I think he had he had the opportunity yeah. yet again here. I think yeah, you either have to just take the nat and then go and defend your third or something like that, or um, or just go home after the third base. I don't think you can kill the main. Well, he and, was also uh, unlucky. We saw that. I think if he ran into the army, he would have killed it. But he left, so. Yeah, it's unlucky, but at the same time, he had his opportunity to kill that army. He knew it was there, and he just didn't move out yeah, for it. Yeah, he's a little too timid. He should have went to crush it. Don't you see a naked army like that? You crush it and run back. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think Cyan, he's a little bit just, I think he's thrown off by how Criminal is playing, because Criminal's definitely playing a little bit less aggressive than we've seen him in the past. And I think that's throwing Cyan for a little bit of a loop. Yep. Well, you know what? One more game if Cyan can pull, pull this off. And you know what, man? The winner of this plays the Archaic, and the winner of that plays me. So I'm getting a lot of scouting here. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's all TVP scouting, so I'm not <laughs> sure how helpful it'll be. But in theory, it will help. Yeah. As uh, yeah, and then um, I guess the one who's really getting a lot of scouting here is instability. In theory, if uh, that's right, it's going to be TVP go. for her. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. Um, but I do wonder how the archaic is going to match up against criminal as well. It should be pretty decent. I know the criminal won, but. Possible he could pull it off, especially watching how this has been going. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But we are loaded in. It's the uh, we're in the top right position of Glittering Ashes LE. Our Terran player up 2-0. He is. And in the bottom left, the blue Protoss player. He is. Simon. Cyan is like one or two small moves away from winning either of those games. Yeah, for sure. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Just a little, not as sharp I think, uh, as he needs. He was tired, he said. So. Yeah, he's tired, and that may be why. I mean, that mind drop was relatively slow in game one <laughs> yeah. like it took him quite a while to actually drop those out and get them burrowed and yeah. cyan still didn't see it until every mine had gone off yep. so i think that might just be a bit of tiredness because I, I we've seen cyan you know face mine drops before and he's done a lot cleaner of a defense yep, so exactly maybe just a little bit of fatigue and that can happen to anyone obviously so in this game though um we'll have to see what he goes for again that previous game he's been playing much more careful um and criminals kind of been Switching it up on him by going for quick third bases, quick naturals, things like that. Yeah. And Cyan's been very late to take his expansions. Well, and so, there you go. The scout. Yep, yeah, the scout. Obviously, yeah, last game as well, being as close as it was off the back of, of like a 40-second supply block because of that proxy pylon. Um, yeah. You know, it's still a very close game. So Cyan can just have a little bit of a cleaner game. I think he'll be in a pretty good spot. And we do see a second pylon here, not trying to proxy this time. And we'll there take a go. quick expansion as well. So he's adjusting. And uh, he's yeah, I do up. worry about... Sorry, go ahead. He's getting warmed up. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, he is. I do worry about criminal. I feel like this is not necessarily the time to try and stretch your horizons of play, so to speak. Like, this is the playoffs. You've got another two or three matches, really, at most and trying to completely change your style at that point. I feel like that's the kind of thing you do in the group stages, maybe, because um, it's a little bit less high stakes and you have a bit more time. Like, obviously, the group stage is like three or four months. This, you play all your matches in the span of a month. So if he's trying to swap over into a bigger macro focus, I think it could end up hurting his chances yeah. to make it into that code S. Wow. But maybe he'll manage to pull it off anyways. Um, all I can say is I'd be a lot more worried for the Archaic against criminal what i've seen of criminals offensive like super all-ins than i would be of this um the archaic i think is a clean enough player in his macro that he he'll have a pretty good shot against these kinds of builds well, and these are also the kind of builds players are a bit more used to you know mind drops yeah. and hellion run bys and stuff like that are that's a bit true. more every day than what we've seen out of criminal in the past um, and that's been a big advantage of his but i think criminal can still obviously pull it out yeah. in this game though <laughs> 
nothing too big happening just yet. Pretty standard. Uh, just a lot of over scouting. There's an oracle coming out. But... Yeah, quick oracle. I think that was obviously pretty much fully scouted. I don't think he necessarily saw it building, but he did see the Stargate, did criminal. And he's actually going for a quick starport. I will say that game three, I think, would not have been even like a question of is criminal going to win? If he'd had medevacs, it seems like he does not build enough medevacs. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, might be a little bit from the wings era. Obviously, medevacs are still important back then, but they weren't quite as important. I'd say you didn't have that boost ability, so dropping in medevacs was like super dangerous, Actually, especially against the blink stalkers. Right there, the boost thing is something he, you know, he's still stuck in the wings of liberty before boost because when he did the mind drop, he dropped them slowly instead of boosting two and then. You know, drop two and then drop the other guy while you're boosting to the other base, right? So four on two bases. You notice that. Right. That was the, the slowest way to, to mind drop, and it still worked. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously, not making a whole ton with his army either. I will say, if you see that as Cyan, I'd really like to see just a very fast storm. Oh, Cyan um, can do a lot of damage here. Yeah, he's not ready for this at all. Oh, my oh but gosh. not the best target fire. Oh, no. Still, though, very slow reaction out of Criminal, only just now pulling, so I don't think that actually the Miss Micro wound up hurting him too much. Um, I mean, still going to be six. Oh, come on, it could be six. Five probes oh, in a... My oh, man. Well, For the potential something. that there was there, it obviously wasn't much, but that's still a lot of damage. Um, that was like almost a fully fresh mule. Five SCVs. Yeah. He's got potential to go back in and get two more kills later. Um, obviously, two SCVs on one hit of damage and another one on two hits, so... That's a pretty easy three additional SCVs there later on. Yeah. Uh, so it's not the end of the world. And shield batteries. So <laughs> that's good. Hey, hey, this is his best game yet. Yeah, and we saw that he saw when he warped his... Uh, he shaded his adept on top of an SCV in the natural trying to get it. Um, and the Hellions actually came up and killed it. So he's aware of the Hellions right now. Um, I think that's a medevac drop going out with Marines in it. No, sorry, that's a double Viking. Double Viking is going to land these guys here for a one-way trip if uh, Cyan yeah, is so. quick enough. Yeah, and Vikings, obviously, because they do deal extra damage to mechanical units, two Vikings oh, can one no. volley I'm seeing, the future, I'm seeing the future ET. Vikings yeah, those drop Hellions are going to run in. F2 to the main base, and then the Hellions run in. I'm seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm there is potential for Cyan to have adjusted from that previous game, right? You go, well, last time I F2 to the main base, the Hellions <laughs> ran in or something like Let's that. See. He did see Hellions. Last time around, he had not scouted the Hellions as well, and this time he has. So hopefully maybe he splits it a bit better, but we'll see. Oh, Four, okay. Well, he's five. not falling for it. But... Yeah, he just warps in, and Cyan... Criminal is very careful, I will say, as a player. Like, he does not... Oh, no. He always scans ahead, does charge in, but there's no blink! Oh, and the Stalkers, they don't even, stalkers uh, stop. these aren't being controlled. They just sort of auto-aggroed onto them. And so they walked away once they got far enough away. Uh, still, though, workers. oh, man, 20 workers. I mean, I think a, a majority of those somehow were from the two Vikings, even with a relatively quick warp in. I'm um, saying, obviously, he made a mistake there with the warp in. They were way too close oh. to the uh, Vikings. And Vikings do deal extra damage to Stalkers. And when you deal extra damage to Stalkers, and they're warping in, so I think they take like 50% extra damage as well. Yep. Two or three of the Stalkers just got like instantly killed as soon as they started to warp in by the Vikings. Yeah. Um, so that left two Stalkers details. in the main base to try and clean up. Details, um, ET, details. It's the details, the devil in the details, I think they call it. Um, still though, this is probably... Still his best game. Well, not the <laughs> least. This isn't the least damage um, as far as what Criminal's done. But I think this is actually maybe the best position Cyan's been in. Yes. Um, he didn't take as much direct worker damage last game, but his build was really sloppy, and he didn't get any counter damage done. This game, he's killed some with his Oracle. He uh, got a good amount of, um, you know, probes already. Oh, I like already, this. This is the best thing he can build. do. Yeah, um, that was pretty good. Does get six SCVs, I think, so not too bad. The Vikings Ooh. do miss the Oracle, and he's looking for something, but... He's These are not here, blink man. stalkers. It's it's big, but there's no blink charge. Isn't done yet. Although criminal's charge. going into mech. Oh, and he canceled the bunker. Well, I don't That's... think it would help. He has. Oh, he oh, does he have three no... marines. I think they're in the main base. <laughs> but he's going charge into mech, done. so the bunker wouldn't be too big. But not having a wall off is big here. And your Vikings oh. moving out across the map. There you I think go. Cyan's gonna maybe do it here. If I mean, he, he's he got has to twenty F2. army supply up. He has to go he... for it. 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh. There's no blue flame on those Hellions and Hellbats, though, as well. So that, oh, and they're moving out. He's trying to take a third base. Oh, this is perfect and Saiyan's for going Saiyan. in. He sees it. Will he go? This is it. Oh, he's trying he to go after that, that Oracle. And now, yeah, he's going to get jumped on here. And the let's see Criminal Vikings. F2 these Vikings back. Yeah, we have seen Criminal F2 in the past. Doesn't nope. think he's going to do it this time. Maybe. But they also don't go to the Mineral Line. So for the moment, they're just going to kill Pylons and things like that. Still, though, if he can hold here, Criminal does have four command centers against only two Nexi. And something else coming to the natural base of Cyan as well. I think that's more Vikings, maybe. Yes, Vikings. Criminal's doing a pretty good job of continuing Ooh, to multi-prong this anyways. Cyan cleans up okay, that so he, Yeah, only loses like four pylons or something like that. Two pylons. It does kill a lot oh, but the of base. probes, though, in the natural base. Oh, but no. But if he gets in here, he gets in here, he'll be fine. Especially if he kills this command center. Yeah, but a tank coming out now. Hellbats oh. behind this wall off is nice, but Cyan's breaking in. Oh, but an excellent hold position on those SCVs out of Criminal. Look at how those Zealots are just running around there. Not getting any damage done for so long. I think it might still be enough to push through, though. Yeah, I think it still has enough. He can kill this command center. Even if he loses his home base, uh, the, the, the bottom base, he's totally fine because there's no production. I think he's done it. Yeah, I think Cyan is cracked through here. He has enough money to warp in and defend at home from those Zealots, or from yes. those Vikings, I should say, with the Zealots. Yeah, the Vikings do get cleaned up. I think we're going to see a tap out out of Criminal here. Hey, we're going to have a fourth game. Yeah. Good job out of Cyan here. Um, a good all-in. Does take a good amount of damage on the counter side of things, but Criminal going for mech, obviously, is a, uh, a difficult strategy to defend with. And uh, I think we're going to see a GG here. Indeed, we do. GG. Taps out. There you go. And then really quick, you can keep going on the games if you want, but I gotta take a quick bathroom break. Yeah, I'll yeah be of back course. Go can. take a quick break, a couple of minutes. We'll talk about um, our, you know, we have Patreon uh, supporting this tournament. So if you guys are interested, please do support if you can. But yeah, let's recognize our Patreon supporters. For FSL. And you can see them right here. Cyan, who's playing right now, by the way, and one of our other players, Hyper Turtle and Stu Blue. And of course, Rogue Ranch. Thanks for the support. If you guys are interested, patreon.com slash Storm. Let us uh, put that link You guys can probably hear my typing. Is it better? There you go. Alright, so game three or four is going to be um what map? Let's check that again. Berlingrad. So yes, yeah, Cyan. Down two to one. Let's see if he ties it up and forces a game five. Guys, this is the playoffs. And what we have going on is, you know, let if just just kind of go back to what happened before. Code B, we finished that off. Chi and Pone goes through that, finishes and wins Code B. He goes to Code A, who he did face Cyan, who Cyan won pretty convincingly. And now we're here at this spot here with Cyan facing Criminal. So, and then later on, what's going to happen here in Code A? The winner goes to Code S. And this is our top league. And then, of course, we still have our 2v2 tournament. The 2v2 champions will be for next uh, Friday. I think that's the match next Friday. That's the schedule. So we'll see that. That's already been set. That's Kodeo versus GG Izzy. So that'll be a really fun uh, 2v2 match for the finals. But for now, we are here at Code A in the semis. And then we'll have the finalists. We already have one, the Archaic. And we're we're gonna find out if it's if it's gonna be criminal or cyan facing the archaic for the finals. So there you go, guys. So we'll be right back while we wait for uh, take a quick break. See you guys in a bit.
All right, we're back, and we are we seeing looking at the players here. They know it's a bathroom break. Cyan uh, took his advantage of that, and um, criminal you can see is actually just hanging out, waiting. We're waiting for ET phone home. Let's see when he gets back. Then we can get this oh. game started. Oh, he's back. I okay, have returned. Great. Sorry, yes. He's back. All right. Well, let's wait for Cyan. I think he's still chilling. Uh. Taking advantage of a breather after that win. I mean, that was he needed that. Now we have a game, game four. And he can yeah, see absolutely daughter. happy to see it. Yeah, <laughs> harassing the dad so that way maybe Cyan can pull it off more easily, right? What do you think? There you go. No sound for you. And uh, let's see. The, the map selection here. Burlingrad. Okay. It's a small map. Yeah, there's uh, minerals in the mid in the middle for even shorter route. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, Berlingrad definitely a funky kind of map. <laughs> so, should be fun though. I feel like in a lot of the maps, it's funny because you felt like in previous years or like three or four years ago a lot of times um you'd have these maps where it's like oh you could do this really cool thing on it or that really cool thing on it uh, and then pros would like literally never do that <laughs> they just play the map like it that didn't exist yeah um but maybe it's partially just because the maps get changed so infrequently now but it feels like even at the pro level you see a lot more of those little quirks of the map really being used to their fullest um like i mentioned astrea Nexus first on the gold base and Pride of Alturas and yeah. uh, you know proxies that rely on those mined out minerals and things mm -hmm. like that. It's really cool to see. Indeed. So we have Cyan back. So let's just double check that they're ready. I do see that they're there. Cyan is there ready. Criminal is waiting on him because obviously I think he's trying to top or uh, type from over his daughter. So we'll yeah, see. he's gonna need to be <laughs> his APM is gonna go down from what? What is it? 180, 200? It's gonna go down to 50 if he doesn't take care of this. Yep. Let me let me let me undeafen him. Let's just double check that he can because he is on the thing. So. Criminal, you ready? Hold on a second. Let me remove my kid. Okay, there you ah. go. All right. Glad we checked. All right, here he goes. Game four, man. Yeah, game four. I'm happy to see it. All right, we're loading in. Here we go. You are watching FSL Season 5. Alrighty, we're here in the bottom right hand side of Berlingrad LE. We've got our player. Is he making the reverse sweep? Begin. He is. Simon. And in the top left, the blue Terran player. He is. Criminal. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Can he close it out here now? Three to one, which I believe I said three to one. You said three to two. So we'll see. One of us is going to be right at this point. <laughs> I was yes. worried there for a minute. We both be wrong. Well, but, uh... you need to be at three one. You need to be right first for me to be right, right? That's true. There you so, go. Well, we need a 3 1 first, and then if. The problem is, I the, the 3 1 is on the other side. And that's what I'm hoping on. Yeah, I'd like to see a 3 2. Um, I just anticipated a 3 1, so we'll see if uh, my heart or my brain wins out here. Well, I'll just take a game 5. How about that? 
I, I don't really care either way. That's true. That's true. I guess, yeah, I, I'm not really thinking of... There could be a 3-2 in the other direction. That is always an option as well. Um, so we do have that gateway finishing up for Cyan. Very, very, very quick second pylon. He is not getting supply blocked again <laughs> early on in the game. Let me tell you. No, no, and he's hiding that first pylon. Yeah, maybe trying to freak it. Criminal out. Um, not going to see I, it. And I feel like with Criminal, he does scout a lot, but that starting SCV does not scout like the whole main base and like the natural no. and stuff. He mainly looks at his territory, um, exactly. not the Protosses. So yeah. there's well, an opportunity there, oh, but he makes another here. pylon. Yeah, so you might but, think of that as a second pylon, but also a player like Criminal, I think he's going to scout even if he sees four pylons in your main base. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter um, how much he sees or doesn't see there in the main too much. Um, but I think, is that going to be a Twilight Council? Star Maybe we'll see like oh, a... Gateway. Oh. oh, just a gateway. Come on, Twilight. He no, should... He's oh? He's four gating, Okay. Man. Four gating. He's man, four I was hoping gating. to see DTs, but a four gate's pretty exciting as um, well. Here's the only thing I don't like about this. Because Criminal oh, saw three gate he's missing, he's missing a pylon, right? The criminal builds on the high ground because of that. And then maybe That's more defensive. That's true, but... He is going three gate blink, so it's going to hit a little bit later anyways, probably around the time that that That's natural true, base guess. moves down. If it was just a four gate, then yeah, I don't like that as much. Um, especially because Criminal doesn't typically linger with the SCV anyways, mm -hmm. um, and the Reaper can scout this pretty easily if it wants to. Uh, but that said, probe. yeah, he traps the probe. Um, hopefully it won't be the end of the world there, but it is four gate blink actually, okay. No robo though, so it's gonna be hard to get high ground vision. You're gonna have to use that. hallucinations He's if you want to do that. Bunker already, so hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, he's gonna scout with an SUV and see there's no natural still. So yeah, he should. I mean, put down he might natural. just stay on the high ground. Then yeah, yeah, tank already on the way. Yeah, I think the reason we see the four gate blink off of a natural base, like parting style build in TVP, although parting obviously not around at the moment to do it, is. Uh, is because it's a lot harder to get a read on, right? You don't necessarily yeah. know that's exactly what the opponent's going for until it's a little too late. With this, it doesn't really matter exactly what they're going for. It just matters that they're on one base. Oh, um, and then from there, Cyan. you just make a lot of units. <laughs> he sees yeah. the SCV and he's like, oh, hi. Did the SCV, it did not see those no, buildings, so that's nice. Oh, he almost pushed it into the buildings, does walk it back around. So good attention to detail there by Cyan. He does walk back to the left of the SCV, and he walked to the right of it with the stalker initially, but then that would have caused the SCV to run into the hidden Look, buildings. Double so he bunkers, does go to the left. triple bunkers. Oh my goodness. It's not going to work. It's not, but at the same time, Criminal's not getting any tech out for himself. So this is a pretty easy, easy position to expand out of. There's no he stem on the way. He doesn't even have a starport. Um... I think if Cyan recognizes what's going on and just pulls back and expands, he'll actually be in a, a pretty playable position, especially considering how playable positions have Five been for him games. whenever he's lost 30 probes. And oh, yeah, still just for the quick made, warp ends. He still hasn't made the uh, sentry to jump in, so... Yeah, well, I mean, oh, but the natural base does come down. Yeah, This, this is, is a lot of stalkers with blink. They might be able to get on top of that and kill it before it can float away, really. Just gonna need to float it very quickly. Will be able to, but does uh, he sees the tank? Does have to pull back. That's two no. mules though gone. Oh, he tries to go in. This is a mistake. Absolutely, no, 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 sees no, the bunker. Get out. Yeah, I think you just make him take his time getting down here and expand, and you're really not in a bad spot, Asian. You do have blink still. Like I guess that criminal. He doesn't even have a starport. He doesn't have stim. He's just now starting that starport in the second barracks to get that stim. So stim is still like three or four oh. minutes off, really. I Would you this. see an expand? Yeah, yeah, yeah this expand. is good. Okay. And getting charged. This is, I, I'd say, this is pretty much the best possible response. I think the only thing that was bad about this was when you get hit by a tank on the high ground and you see they have nothing on the low ground, and you're like, "I'm gonna go kill that tank." That's not very good. Yeah. You're gonna get killed there. And that he did lose a stock or two or two for it, but yep. it's not the end of the world. Um, as far as you know, mistakes you could make, it's pretty tame. Um, I'd like to see a lot of probing though. He's just now starting to fire up some probes in his main base yep. again. He's a that He's getting charged. that charge though. Yeah, maybe a robo though for like some vision you need to get like an observer to see exactly what's going on i mean criminal could easily go up to like five barracks here and just go for a big timing um after he lands his natural base but cyan doesn't really have a way of knowing whether or not that's happening At the same time though, it's going to take him a long time to push down here especially at this level 
creeping forward your siege tanks to where you can actually take your natural base is a bit of an art. <laughs> so it's it's not just as that easy. It's like, oh, I have enough tanks to do it. I can do it. You have to know where to put them, slowly leapfrog them down the ramp and everything like that. And it takes time. And uh, so the natural base is finished up for Cyan here. Right. And Criminals is still not landed. So again, I think a pretty good reaction out of Cyan. I would like to see a Robo or a Forge or something or just heavy Chrono on the probes maybe. We do see Chrono out. Already, so that's storm, very good. Which I like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Storm. I think that's probably the best choice here, um, especially because we have seen just how little criminal likes to make medevacs seemingly. Um, oh, here's the key: just do not lose your your army, in it, please. Get yeah. It. I mean, you can take a tank shot here and there, even just pick away at the units. Criminal's doing a good job, though, with his tank positioning, I will say. Um, and he is still up in workers. Ooh, Does drop. have that stem coming out. Yeah, and plus one. However, the drop is going to go into a player who has five gateways in charge. So even just the defensive warp-ins of Zealots should be enough to kind of defend that. Same time, though, if you just drop in where that pylon is, you can kill those buildings without the Zealots even being able to get to you. But uh, already warping into home is Cyan. He senses it. He's, he's sniffing it out, man. He knows there's got to be something coming his way. Criminals um, drop, drop lover. He loves it. Yeah, and that's great game sense out of him there, uh, out of Cyan. So perfect timing, really. It's like as soon as Criminal thinks about it, Cyan's thinking about it, too, at that exact timing. So that's very good for him there. Criminal is going to drop in there, and there's only two Stalkers here. Oh, you could actually just drop out, Criminal. <laughs> you see the units, and you're like, oh, I, I can't do this. But with that slight delay in the drop i think he could have depowered these gateways but he delayed it enough that oh, instead he's going to lose good. the full medevac so yeah. a little bit wishy-washy there out of criminal um but obviously you don't necessarily expect your opponent to create such a perfect little drop spot for you so you probably think there's a gap there <laughs> and by the it's time you trap, realize man. it's, it's too late absolutely got to get those stalkers out of there of course in the near future and he needs to fix his mining uh, this is something we've seen storm he has a little bit of storm. He's out this season archons really with this so that's the only thing yeah archon though is still going to be fairly good against a player yeah, who's only now building medivacs um oh. as long as he's pushed out on the map tries to take a third base though and criminals blocked it so that's nice out of criminal there uh and cyan i don't know man he's slowing down it feels like in this oh, game he's not man. really doing much Oh, does he think he's researched Storm? He must think that. Um, because he's no, got that one he making, high Templar. He's just short. Much. This is about positioning and how he engages. He'll either crush this or just barely lose out. Yeah, and he does have two shield batteries now, so I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Ghost Ooh, Chan or whoever has been helping him out on here. The other side. Yeah, that's good. Could blink it behind the tanks. I'm pretty sure whoever's helping him out, you know, everyone usually has people telling them what to do in between games. I'm pretty sure what he's heard is shield batteries, shield batteries. So he's getting much better about building those, even just during this series. So that's nice. But here it is. He's oh, just... he's going on the one spot. He didn't. Yeah, and I think he's just now realizing he doesn't have storm. I mean, he warped that high oh, templar in there man. and left it there. I think and, he's uh... himself out of this too. Look, this is a terrible engagement for him. Yeah, I mean, the Archon of Shield Battery Overcharge obviously is nigh unkillable, but if he had Storm here, this is a one game, like, pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Criminal, I mean, there was a High Templar there with energy, and Criminal didn't split at all. Um, just not starting up Storm. That's yeah. so painful there for Cyan. It felt like Cyan, he had a good spot, but he, I don't think he... It's one of those things where if you're doing a new build, you haven't done much that's, like, aggressive, like the Blink build, and then you macro out of it, your macro is still worse Here than it what is. it would have been otherwise because you're just not sure what to do. And it really felt that way. His extra gateways were late. His storm was forgotten. Um, and with that, Criminal's going to be able to push through to a 3-1 victory, it looks like. And GG is called. And there you go. We know what the finals is for Code A. Let's bring the players back here. Let's bring ET back too. Um, yeah, let me see. And see I think if my phone's possible. back up. Otherwise, no worries. All right, welcome back, gentlemen. Uh, pretty good games. I know the first two are very rusty for you, uh, Cyan. What do you, What do you think? Yeah, uh, game one super rusty. Uh, the Widowman drops just basically killed that game from the start, and in game two. If I got shield batteries at third, I'll probably take that fight, and then I'll probably take the map yeah, right then. Exactly. Game one and two, it's kind of like, you know, you started from behind, and then game three, you took the win. And then actually game four, I think you could have won too, but 
Seems like you forgot Storm and you just didn't blink down on the other side so you can flank. What do you think? What happened in game four? Yeah, I was a little late with the Storm. Not enough. Uh, I didn't have enough gas and I kept building the Templars and I was like, oh, I keep forgetting to get Storm. And yeah. I'm not sure if I could have blinked up on his ramp after I pushed his natural. No. But I, I felt like with the tank, I just had to pull back, so... Yeah. He knew. He saw you didn't have a base, so he knew you were all inning. So I think the only adjustment I would make to that is not let him see... I mean, you were hiding a pylon, so he got suspicious. So if I was you, if you're going to do that anyway, don't hide the pylon. Let him build normally. Right? Now he got suspicious, and then he scouted again, saw you have no natural, so he knew. So he made three bunkers, and you're never going to kill him with a blink. Yeah, I tried to make the which would have been the third pylon right there by my nexus to make him think that it was just the second pylon. Yeah. Uh, and then I didn't see his SUV got back in. I totally missed that altogether. Yeah, that really just threw it off. But anyway, you know, it, the good news is in all the games you lost, you actually fought back and almost made a game out of it, even though almost everyone should have been dead right there and should have GG'd. But you kind of came back on, on these games. So it just shows your potential. You just got to clean up your game a little bit. Um, but it was a lot better. I know you were you were not happy with it, but it's a lot better than than the score suggests. What do you think? Do you disagree or? No, I agree. I think I had some in, like in game two. I think I had great storms, uh, and like I said, if I have those shield batteries at the third with all the immortals I have, his army just melts with those storms too, and then I just push across the map and take that map, and then we're talking two two probably going into game seven. Yeah. Uh, game. And if I don't forget storm in the in the third game too and just get storm and then start building the templars and then i've got storm i could probably take that one as well there you go well it's good to know what you what you can improve right uh, et what do oh, you yeah. think yeah. Uh, let's ask uh, some questions from et's perspective here yeah i mean obviously that was something we talked about a little bit uh during the games is uh, shield batteries and i mean you even improved throughout the series at making those um and they wound up i mean coming in clutch in several instances um and yeah, obviously Storm, I think just being late in that game four is really the difference there. And it felt, I, you, I'd be curious to see if you felt kind of the same way. But for me, a lot of times it feels like if I'm doing like a build, I don't typically do like an aggressive build. And then I go into macro. My macro just isn't quite what it would be if I just went straight into macro. And it kind of felt that way. It was like, you're trying to like transition out of the mindset. So like your gateways were a little late and like Storm, you didn't quite get it in time and stuff like that. Did it kind of feel that way where you're just you're in an aggressive mindset and then you're trying to switch back over. Yeah. Cause, uh, when I took his natural in the third game and then I kind of hung around there and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and expand. And like I said, you know, I forgot storm. I didn't get the extra gateways. I'm sure I was floating a crap ton of minerals there at some point too. And I probably could have had, I, you know, like you said, four gateways per base. So I should have had eight to nine, you know, whatever I was going to do with a, you know, storm coming and, I didn't do that and i kept looking down I'm like i still only have four gateways i'm gonna lose this fight right okay yeah that was my main question then um and yeah like i said sometimes it's just hard to transition your mind over when you're doing that all in and then you're like well i actually got a macro and then yeah it's just hard to do so very well played though um a great result for this you know season overall and uh, we hope to see you back next season as well i'm excited to see what you pull there we'll be back next season and congratulations to Criminal. He's on to the finals in Code A. He's going to be facing the Archaic. What do you think, Criminal? And I need to improve my micro, man. Okay. Uh, game one, yeah, that storm landed. <laughs> but <laughs> thankfully, I was so, so far ahead. And uh, I should have attacked with the split army. But you know, I thought I was already far, far ahead anyway. So <laughs> just A move. But uh, it worked out really good. Second game was same when I killed all those stalkers. I said, uh, I'm going to have to, I can finish it early. And uh, the third game, I was trying to be playful, but I forgot to make tanks before the tours. So that's what killed me. Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're going to watch the VODs and see other improvements because we had a lot of questions with your composition, right, E.T.? Go ahead, ET. Yeah, yeah, I guess um, obviously it felt like you're trying to shift a little more and more into like macro styles instead of just purely aggressive, which I think is good. But obviously, like, 
I think game two it was you had Ghost, Thor, Marine, Firebat, and like it was like, <laughs> is it Mech? Is it Bio? So is that just kind of you're figuring out the compositions and stuff in the macro games more? Yeah, just uh, trying to figure out which one would be better because uh, it's really hard to micro the ghosts and uh, marines. Where you have the stutter step, but when you have mech, I think it's a lot easier. Just A move and, and EMP, so I'm trying to learn that. <laughs> See if yeah. it, that will make a difference. Right, for sure. And then obviously this means you'll be heading up against the Archaic in the finals. You were able to beat him in the group stages. How are you feeling going into that match? Uh, pretty confident. I'll try to play more standard. Uh, right now, I'm just. I think I have uh, no solid build yet, so I'm gonna try to find a solid build for, for this uh, code. I mean, uh, this level. Okay. Perfect. All right. Those are my questions, KJ. All right. Uh, any final words from Cyan? Yeah. Good luck. Good luck in the finals against the Archaic. Oh, and, thank uh, you. And yeah. GG's, man. Yeah, GG. That was a good was game. A lot of fun. There yep. you go. Yeah, and, and you know, there's two V two finals coming up next week or this I think it's this Friday. And then we'll have the Code A finals. So good luck to you guys. And then the winner of that goes to the Code S play in, who I face the winner. So it's either criminal or the archaic. So no, it's ET, gonna be fun any final way. words from you. Yeah, what's that? What's what would you say, criminal? I said it's gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see who comes out there, and then I'll prepare then. Uh, E.T., right. final words from you. Yeah, just great games overall, y'all. That was a very entertaining series. Um, great storms, great uh, harassment out of Criminal, and I uh, look forward to seeing the finals. All right. Thanks Thank for you so casting much, guys. tonight. And uh, good night. Good luck. Have fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on Friday, same time. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you. GG's, guys. GG's. GG's. So that'll do it, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. You guys saw the playoffs for Code A. See you guys next time.